Tonight, COVID vaccination rates in parts of our region remain low. And a major cruise company cancels its visit to Port Lincoln this summer. From our seven Spencer Golf Studios, your nightly news with John Hunt begins now. Good evening. With South Australia soon opening its borders, health authorities are encouraging more Spencer Golf residents to get vaccinated against COVID-19. In Wyala, SA Health has launched a weekly pop-up clinic to boost numbers. It's a race against time to get more people vaccinated before society opens up and relaxes restrictions. SA Health spearheading a drive to encourage Spencer Golf residents to get their shots. So there is certainly some vaccine hesitancy in the community and it's absolutely essential that the people get their facts from a reliable resource such as SA Health. So we know that the COVID vaccine is 90% effective. A pop-up vaccination clinic is now operating at Westland Shopping Centre in Wyala every Thursday. A mobile version also touring a number of cities and towns in the region. We are trying to make it as easy as possible for everybody in our communities to receive the COVID-19 vaccine. It comes as many parts of the Spencer Gulf have a first dose vaccination rate below 80%. Wyala is at 77%. Port Augusta doing a little better with 79%. Outback South Australia, which includes Port Lincoln, sits at 75%, while Port Piri has exceeded 80% in first doses. The region's pharmacies also key in getting vaccination rates up in the Spencer Gulf. Port Piri chemist Robin Johns receiving a surge in bookings over the past two weeks. It's great that the regional people have really stepped up and getting vaccinated um, and if there's got any family or friends who've still got doubts, you know, they can walk in and have that discussion with their local pharmacy. Mark Zita, 7, Spencer Golf News. Meanwhile, two new cases of COVID-19 have been recorded in Broken Hill. Both are close contacts of a known case and are currently in isolation. Prior to this, the city went exactly one week without any new infections being detected. Once again, the Far West Local Health District is urging anyone with the mildest of COVID-like symptoms to come forward for testing. There has now been a total of 125 cases in Broken Hill, with eight of those cases active. Neostar is set to build a $23 million product recycling facility at its Port Piri smelter. The sealed negative air pressure environment will allow materials to be stored and mixed without contributing to local lead pollution. Taking that work, which does kick up dust with lead in it, and completely sealing it in so that none of those fugitive lead emissions can leave that site. The state government is providing a $7 million grant to help build it. Preliminary works will commence in early 2022, with construction expected to take around 30 months to complete. In a blow for the Air Peninsula tourism industry, a major Australian cruise line has cancelled its 2020 season. However, it is not all doom and gloom, with experts confident visitor numbers will remain high. Staying clear of Port Lincoln this summer, P&O will not set sail out of Adelaide this cruise season amid concerns about when cruising restrictions will be lifted. The news a major blow for lower air peninsula operators. It is disappointing, but you know we're in an environment that is complex and got many challenges. The company cancelling its Adelaide stopovers until at least February 2023. However, three smaller services have committed to visiting the region. These vessels are excellent. They get into, you know, some very special parts of our state, 30 um, ports of call or, or locations that they'll be calling in. Local tourism operators buoyed by the number of passengers expected on these smaller vessels. Very exciting. We're happy for any cruise ships that can uh, make it down to the Air Peninsula and Port Lincoln. Experienced Coffin Bay have upgraded their facilities in preparation for an increase in visitors. Our new boat was built uh, with that in mind, that we can cater for those large numbers, etc. The Tourism Commission confident it will still be a busy time. They're also working with a number of operators right across the region as well, so I think that's also really important. The first passenger ship is expected later this month. Dylan Smith, 7 Spencer Gulf News. 
Port Perry Police are encouraging regional residents to consider joining the force. They say it's important for these positions to be filled by people who want to learn and stay in country areas long term. Learning the ways of the law in Port Perry. In the midst of the recruitment process, the city is being described as the perfect location for aspiring officers. Port Pirie and the region um, offers exceptional opportunities for members um, in terms of the diverse range of jobs that you might not necessarily get in a metropolitan location. The station interested in getting more people with a connection to regional areas to join their ranks. Continue to encourage um, people in the regions to apply um, for the police force. We are recruiting at the moment um, and we really encourage regional people to apply for these positions and return regional. More people are choosing to join the force, all at different stages of their lives. Andrew and Kira, excited by the new lines of work outside of Adelaide. I think just learning to be operational and learning the job on the streets as opposed to in a classroom setting, so putting those theories into practice. We get a lot more involvement with the community, which is great. Uh, speaking with my course mates back home, they don't get that opportunity. They're a lot busier where we get time to you know, interact a bit more. They say the country positionings allow officers to develop a wider range of skills. Being in a regional location, there's a significant amount of opportunity for development in their careers. So we're really excited to see uh, what these officers are going to um, do in their careers. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. Still to come tonight, Greys is reminded to look after their cattle this Christmas. And funding now available to upgrade South Australia's regional airports. Welcome back. Landholders near Broken Hill are being reminded to guarantee the health of their livestock is maintained over the holiday period. Western Local Land Service is releasing a Christmas checklist to ensure nothing is missed. Santa is on his way and so too are the summer shutdowns. Experts saying now is the time to prepare. Abattoirs, sale yards are all essentially entering a Christmas shutdown, so it's, it won't be easy to sell stock around this period. Landholders told to check they'll have enough feed to support their stock and have plans in place to ensure animals have access to secure water sources. As we get into summer, where we are expected to have hotter and drier conditions, the water consumption of livestock can and often will increase. Far West Graziers planning to move animals are urged to apply for anthrax vaccinations with outbreaks generally occurring during hot and dry conditions. Caution should be advised uh, because uh, this is a disease which can affect humans if we are in contact with infected tissue. Meanwhile, the latest aerial baiting for wild dogs is almost complete with ground baiting to begin. Numbers are really down, so now we're at a point where we're being proactive and doing something to keep ahead of the numbers and keep them low. After the drought and the pandemic, it's hoped these simple measures will mean a stress-free Christmas on the land. Lachlan Itter, 7 Spencer Golf News. Local governments in the Spencer Gulf are encouraged to apply for a grant which will help improve small airports and aerodromes. Up to $100,000 will be made available for safety and infrastructure improvements. It's a grant the South Australian government hopes will help the Spencer Gulf smaller aerodromes be ready for takeoff. The Transport Minister announcing a new round of funding to help communities with their airport infrastructure. This has been a really big success and we're glad to open this up again for grants of up to $100,000 to help those regional airports upgrade their facilities. The funds will be made available for local councils and operating groups to fix and upgrade runways, terminals and fencing. The improvements also vital for emergency services such as the RFDS to access communities. We care about our regions and we want to make sure they've got the facilities and the resources they need to be able to have all of those things, to be able to you know, grow their economy through tourism, uh, also for, for safety aspects. Grants from last year's program has helped upgrade facilities in Port Augusta and Corn. 
generating tourism and business a key factor in providing the money to regional communities. This is a great opportunity for local government to work with state government uh, to get some really good outcomes for people in the regions. Anyone that wants to get involved, hop on that website and put their application in. Applications close on November 26. Mark Zita, 7 Spencer Gulf News. The RAA has recognised more than 250 people who have been members of the motoring body for more than 50 years. Port Augustus Branch, one of a number holding a function to honour them, also using the time to seek their feedback. Celebrating an exclusive club of RAA members, Golden 50 functions were held in Clare, Port Augusta and Wyala to honour a number of locals' golden anniversary milestone. Today we're actually celebrating uh, members who've been with us for at least 50 years, continuous membership. So today is an opportunity to say thank you to them. The functions included presentations, light refreshments and vintage videos showcasing the history of road travel in the state, prompting many to reminisce on how far the motoring world has come. To reflect on the history about where we've come as an organisation and perhaps also South Australia as well when we think about that motor travel is pretty much synonymous with the growth of the state. The function also presenting a tailored presentation on road safety and the services that are available to over 50s. The RAA saying they are committed to maintaining the safety of this demographic, especially on regional roads. It's good to meet them in person too and hear their various stories about what's happened to them during their, their motoring journeys and you know, more importantly what we can continue to do to support them. Edward McCarroll, 7 Spencer Golf News. Good on them. Stay with us, a blast from the past uncovered at an iconic Broken Hill business and the Air Peninsula Landscape Board strategic plan released. Nominations for next year's Wireless Citizen of the Year Awards are now open to the public. The awards recognise individuals and organisations that have made significant contributions to the Steel City. Nominations can be made across 11 categories, with six of those are Community Achievement Awards. Winners will be announced at a ceremony on Australia Day in January. To nominate someone or to find out more information, visit Council's website. Submissions have now opened for next year's Perfect Light Film Festival. Films can run for as long as eight minutes, with more than $2,000 up for grabs in prize money, including a special category for young filmmakers. The top 12 films will be screened before a panel of judges at the festival in Broken Hill next April. Entrants have until the 4th of February to polish their masterpieces and upload them through the festival's website. Spare time during Broken Hill's lockdown has helped staff at Bell's Milk Bar uncover a historic mural. Painted more than six decades ago and hidden behind a wall, it's once again taking pride of place at the iconic store. Like many Broken Hill locals, Don Mudi has fond memories of weekends spent at Bell's Milk Bar. The unveiling of this original mural taking him back to his childhood. The years of the, of the Holden that just come out and things like that. And it portrays very much the early 1950s to me. The singing banana and rocking orange are just part of a mural painted in the 1950s. The now retro artwork was simply covered up by a new wall two decades later. The current custodians had an inkling it was still there, but didn't know what to expect when they began unearthing it during lockdown. We didn't know if they'd glued it or screwed it or how, how the whole thing was uh, attached, whether it had even been painted over first. Um, so yeah, to find it in great nick was absolutely thrilling. Now alongside the existing 1970s recreation by Bruce Kerr, visitors can see the original. I knew her by sight, uh, Lenore Andrews. She was an art teacher at the Broken Hill High School. And Broken Hill is known for a range of different murals. Um, we reckon this might be as early as the early 50s, which could make it the oldest surviving mural still in town. Australia's longest running milk bar still making history today. Lachlan Itter, 7 Spencer Golf News. 
The Eyre Peninsula Landscape Board has released its regional landscape plan for the next five years, with farming and eradicating pests key priorities. It comes after new legislation regulating the groups came into effect last year. Looking to develop a sustainable future for the Eyre Peninsula's natural environment, the Landscape Board's new strategic plan for the next four years is now public, with agriculture a key focus. We've got a fair focus on sustainable agriculture at the moment. We have um, contracts with the Commonwealth under the National Land Care Program. Pests, plants, animals and biodiversity also highlighted. While the region's scarcity of natural water, also an area of key importance in the plan. The water for consumption uh, through Air Peninsula comes from underground resources. As a consequence, we need to manage that well through the water allocation plan. The government body is responsible for around 80,000 square kilometres of land, while also looking after 3,000 kilometres of coastline. Draw a line from Wyala to the other side of Fowler's Bay, everything south of that. Community feedback also a key feature, with locals playing a role in its development. When we were putting this plan together, it wasn't that long ago that um, under the old Natural Resource Management Board arrangements uh, that we'd done a, a very comprehensive consultation right across the region. The public can access it by heading to the group's website. Dylan Smith, 7 Spencer Gulf News. Stay with us after the break. Our experts preview the weekend's local cricket fixtures. And we will take a look at what to expect weather-wise this weekend. Hello again. Yesterday's rain event has forced a cancellation of this weekend's cricket fixtures in Wyala. However, the rest of the region is still playing at this stage. With a preview, here's our experts with their tips. Hello and welcome to Round 5 of Port Pirie Cricket. With the turf wickets unable to prepare this week, both matches will be played on hard wicket. Wondera take on Southport. Southport have had a strong start of the season and be looking to reverse the result from round two when they lost to Wondera. Wondies have been fielding very young sides so far and will continue to give these youngsters opportunities. I'm tipping Southport in this one. In the other match, props take on Port Germain. The last time these two sides met, it was props who took the points chasing down the total with an over to spare. I'm tipping props again. G'day and welcome to round four of uh, Port Against the Cricket. Uh, this week we see uh, South take on Corn at Etza. This should be a very good match. Um, I'm going to lean towards South Augusta to win that match. The other match sees uh, West Augusta take on Central Stirling at Chinnery. West are yet to win and I don't think they'll win this week either, so I'm going to go for Central Stirling. So there are my two winners, South and Central Stirling. Welcome to this week's Port Langham Cricket Tips. First game in the round sees Tasman's travel out to Dorwood Oval to take on Todd River. Todd River coming off an, another loss, but they put in a really good bowling performance against Charlton and uh, should be buoyed by that. Tasman's coming off a really good game against Southern Air South and should be too strong and get the job done in this one. Next game sees Waybacks and Charlton at Paul Oval. This should be a really good game of cricket. Waybacks, uh, if they can get their batting going, should be up and about here. But Charlton just all over the field with the bat, the ball, should be too strong and I think they'll uh, get the win over Waybacks. Thanks for listening to the Portland Cricket Tips. Barrett District Cricket continues this weekend with uh, 40 over games. Um, we lost the second game last week due to weather and uh, it's looking up in the air a little bit uh, due to rain this weekend as well. And the Saturday's game, South take on Central. Uh, South last week struggled uh, to get runs on the board and I think this could be a case again to, uh, this weekend if we do get underway. On Sunday's game, West take on North. But I think West may perhaps get up in this contest and snatch the points in what should be a very good game. To the weather now, and Alex Sykes is away, so I will be taking you through the details. And showers were still spotted across the region. From 3pm today, Port Augusta and Port Pirie were both 18, Port Lincoln and Wyler both 16 with showers, Broken Hill 17, Cooper Pedy was cloudy in 18, and it was 15 with showers in Adelaide. Taking a look at the satellite image now, and cloud streaming across southeastern areas is bringing rain and storms. Scattered cloud over the southwest with moisture and cold winds are causing the odd showers. 
High pressure in northern and far western areas is bringing clear and dry skies. Moving on to tomorrow's weather outlook now, and we'll start with the Gulf waters. Southerly winds 20 to 25 knots, seas 1.5 to 2.5 metres. The swell south to southwesterly reaching 1 metre. Looking at tomorrow's forecast, and showers are in most parts. Port Lincoln and Woodness 17, Cleve a degree cooler, 16 expected there. Further north, similar conditions are expected, while at Port Augusta and Kadena all set to reach 18 degrees. Anyone in Port Piri tomorrow should pack an umbrella. The city looking at showers in 18. It's a day best spent inside in Clare tomorrow, a top of just 14 forecast. Broken Hill, the region's outlier, partly cloudy and 18. Looking ahead now and on Sunday, showers are expected for Port Lincoln, Adelaide, Port Piri, Port Augusta and Kadena. Cooper PD will be mostly sunny and a top of 21. Broken Hill partly cloudy and 18. Those pesky showers are set to clear from western and northern areas on Monday. While are in Broken Hill 19, Port Augusta can expect 20. Woodna cloudy and 19. Showers in 18 in Port Lincoln. Adelaide can expect the same. Dry conditions will finally return on Tuesday. Cooper PD sunny and 29 degrees. Woodna 24. Broken Hill and Port Perry are both looking at partly cloudy in 22. Those in Adelaide will see mostly sunny conditions. And in Wyala, you can expect 21 and partly cloudy. And that's the local news for tonight and the week. Just a reminder, you can find us on social media at our Facebook, Twitter and YouTube pages. I'm John Hunt. Thanks for your company. I'll have updates later. And the team will return on Monday at 7pm. Until then, have a great weekend. Good night.